if I just touch my brake, the back tires are locking up. We have a brake problem. All right, do you like to do stuff yourself and save a little bit of money? Well, you've come to the right place because that's what this channel is about. Uh, if nothing else, I hope you're at least entertained. I have a lot of how-to videos and do-it-yourself type projects here on the channel, so please take time and look around. Anyways, let's take a look, see what we have for today's video. So today what I'm gonna do is pull this off and uh, I'm gonna put new drums and pads because, uh, or shoes, whatever, because when I touch the brake, as you heard, my um, wheels lock right up on me, these back wheels, so there's definitely an issue. So I'm just gonna replace all of it and hopefully that takes care of it. So I'll show you the process. First thing we're gonna do is get the tire loosened up, get the vehicle lifted, get the tire off. All right, so as you can see, it's in the air, tire is off. In this case, um, this drum is in bad shape and um, we're gonna replace this, but we're gonna go ahead and pull this off. And uh, what I was saying in this case, it's already pretty loose. So unfortunately in that case, sometimes these things are really bound right on and you gotta pound the crap out of them. But not in this case, so we're gonna go ahead and pull that off. I don't know if you can see the grooves there or not. I don't know how close I can get, you can still see. See those grooves? So um, basically the pad has gone bad and it's now gouging into the drum itself. And so when I touch the brakes, it's not just smooth pad hitting the drum. There's probably metal. One of the rivets are probably showing on here and it's grabbing the drum hard and that's why this, this wheel is locking right up and squealing the tires. So I'm glad I spent the money on new ones before I even took these off. I figured this was probably the problem. And of course the pads, if you can see, are very thin too. Okay, so I showed you the old one. Here is the new one in much better shape and no gouge marks on the inside. So what we need to do now is get the old pads off, um, shoes, and we'll replace those. And then we'll put this new drum on. This is on a 1999 Jeep Wrangler. And it's just the standard edition. You have these little tabs right here. They have to be pushed in and turned. Um, a quarter turn is what they need to go. And they make special tools for this that are pretty handy. I don't have one. So I'll sometimes use um, vice grips or needle nose pliers, depending on how bad they are, how um, strong the springs are. And on the back side, there's a little pin I usually hold my finger so when I push back, it doesn't push the pin back because the pin's what it has to stay in position and turn. So I'm just going to push, turn a quarter, turn, and that's all there is to it. And that's off. And if, you, if I put this up close, you can see what I'm talking about. There's a flat spot, and I'll pull this pin out so you can see it. What happens is this uh, goes in. Like that, turns, and then locks in the position. And when you want to take it out, you just turn it and take it out. And of course, the spring is what holds the tension on it. So I bought the whole kit of new ones of these, but uh, it's all, these are in good shape. So I don't have to reuse these. I, I don't have to use the new ones. So we'll set those aside. So you have two of those to do. So we'll get this other one popped off real quick. And actually, what I should have done is taken these off first, but... Okay, so the next thing you gotta do is you got these two springs. One on this side that hooks here and into the shoe, and one on this side that hooks into the shoe. Um, so those need to come off. And these can be a bit tricky. I don't have the tool with me that I want for this, so uh, you gotta have to, there, there is a tool they make for this that will grab and pull these right in position. And I did not grab that. So uh, just give me a minute while well, maybe I will go grab it and pull it off. But these, they have quite a bit of tension on these, but you're just going to want to pull it out from around this knob here and that'll loosen this brake up. And then you're going to pull the other one around and then that, and then these will be pretty much almost ready to come off. All right, so I got one popped off here. Basically, I just put the screwdriver underneath here, pushed up on it, put a little pry bar underneath the top of it here and popped it off. This one here is going to go a little bit differently. Um, again, if you have the right tool for this, it's even easier. But if you just stick this in there, wedge it in behind the shoe, and then get it close, then you can get in here with something to pop it off the pin. Just like that. So now that one's off. So there's a few different ways you can do it, but if you do this all the time, buy the right tools to do it. It saves you a lot of work. So these uh, are in pretty good shape. So I don't really have to do anything with these, but what I do is lay these out 
on the size that they come out because sometimes these springs are different. In this particular case, they are identical, so it doesn't matter, but that's not always the case. All right, so that's that, and you do have the uh, emergency brake cable that has to be disconnected down here, and that's a matter of getting this, this little clip off. Usually, I wasn't really thinking, usually I do all this before I pull those other pins, these springs, because then it holds the brake pads in position while you're doing all this. But I just didn't, wasn't thinking, I guess, in this. So you just kind of push that out, and then you pull that, pop that off, and then that pin comes off, that little clip. And then there's a little washer here that you don't want to lose underneath here. So you got this one little, one last spring that's got to come off. This one's not nearly as hard. There's that one. And it's just a spring. It just hooks in two holes. It's pretty self-explanatory. Just got to make sure you get it in the right holes in behind there. Now this pad on the left should come off with pretty much no issues. The one on the right has the emergency bit cable hooked to it. Um, so that's what we have. Now this is your automatic tensioner. We're going to take this thing off and clean it all up because I can see it doesn't look like it's working very well. And as far as the brake cable, usually you just twist it a certain way. You just There's just tension on it. so. Might have to get a screwdriver in behind there. Pull that spring back. Like that. And that comes off. Now, you have to save all these pieces because these are going to go on your new shoes. Okay, the shoes don't come with this piece. And don't come with this piece down here that I took the clip off with this other little spring, which is your... Um, your automatic tensioner kind of kind of helps advance that to keep your brakes tight as they're wearing down and So uh, you have to save all these pieces and install them onto your new shoes So remember how you take this stuff off All right, so you want to grab your new shoe. You want to make sure it's the same one um, There is a front and back on these because they get the pin in the back here that holds all this hardware So you can see that right there actually you can see it better on the new one You can see that pin right there so make sure you have that one when you start putting these components onto your your uh, new pad. The other part, if you look closely, there's a spring here. And that's what holds this thing down. So if I pick up on it, it wants to go back. So that's going to be put back in the same position on the new shoe. It just sits up against the back of the shoe and then hooks around the front of this here and then slides on the pin. Basically, all you're going to do is slide the spring onto the new pin and then you got to get this thing locked back underneath that spring and you just kind of put it up underneath like this and then I'm going to, I can't really do it up here in the camera but I'm going to basically what I'm going to do once that's in there is I'm going to pull the spring taut it's going to get tighter slip it down over it like this it's going to slot forward like this and then it's locked on there and the spring's holding it down so I'm going to do that off camera because I just can't hold it up in the air like this and that's all there is to it there it is so now the spring is on the new pin. At this point, we can actually go ahead and replace uh, the washer that was on there and the slide lock. That does not have to wait until it's back in, on the vehicle. So we'll do that right here. So I got it started. You can see. And then I'm just basically just tapping that pin all the way on. I mean that clip all the way on the pin until it's locked. Alright, so I forgot to show it, but basically... I put a pair of vice grips on the tail end of this emergency brake cable, pry this spring forward, and then you can slide this bracket back in. And of course it has to go into the um, brake shoe right there. So this is now ready to go back on. Um, but before we do that, we're just gonna do a little bit of cleaning in here. So was, you don't really need to watch that, but I'm gonna go ahead and wire brush and blow some dirt out of here and get this ready for the new, new pads. Okay, so I got this cleaned up quite a bit. You want to be very careful around uh, the brake cylinder. These are little rubber boots, and that's what's keeping that fluid in there, so you don't want to be messing around with that too much. It's 
use a rag and kind of wipe up around it and hopefully you don't have any issues. Now, the one thing I didn't show uh, when I was taking it apart is this uh, bracket here because it's in behind here and it kind of rests um, in against, uh, I think it's here, but it's hard to tell until it's in there, but it rests against the pad so it can't uh, go all the way back. And it does have a spring on it that helps um, keep it in the position. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and put this piece back on. And slide this in position like this. And this is when I actually <laughs> do these pins. I usually do them last and then I do them first when I'm putting it back together because it holds the brakes in position. There's that hole right there, slide that through. Basically, I want to get that lined up with that pin again and reverse the process. So once you get that one locked in, uh, this goes in behind here. And there's a little groove right there that it sits in. Probably can't see it too well. Now you can see it moving right there. So it sits in there, so it's ready to take the other one when I put the other shoe on. But before we go any further, um, I've got to clean up this um, adjustment piece here. It's two pieces, it unscrews as it's supposed, you know, as it's, as the pads wear down to keep them close to the drum. Um, but I can see this thing is bound up pretty bad. So we're gonna take that, pull it all apart. It won't even turn it all, clean it all up, grease the threads a little bit, and then we'll be ready to assemble the rest of this together. All right, so I took this over to the bench, cleaned it all up, got everything loosened up so it can turn. This just sits in there and that allows it to turn on that end as this thing is turning and tightening. And this is the end that was froze up that um, needs to be able to turn because that is the adjustment. And you can see now it comes out there relatively easily. Um, you can see I had to heat it up quite a bit. The shoe's been stuck, stuck closed for a long time. So now um, that has got to go back in here as we put the other brake pad on. A little tricky because you got two or three things that has to hold at the same time. You have to put this spring back in here on the back side of that. All right, so I find in, when you get to this point, it's easier in some cases to put this spring on the bottom. Down there, you can just barely see it, but I got the spring hook now, the lower spring. And then you gotta have this bar up here in position. Once you have all that kind of where it goes, what's going to happen is you got to pull this apart quite a bit to put your adjuster in. And this, depending on what vehicle you're working on, there's all different ways that this works best. In this particular way, uh, case, this works about the easiest. We get the back end up in there where it has to go, and then you pull this out and lock that on like that. Make sure everything's in position where it goes, which is not quite yet. There we go. And that gets that adjuster back in position. And then you just gotta make sure this bracket up here is in position correctly. And then, the next thing I do is put the pin on this side to hold this shoe from coming off. So just get that pushed, you get a quarter turn, and that locks it in position. All right, so now we're left uh, with putting these springs back on. I got that, that bar's in position back there, like, you know, these are all clipped in, the emergency brake is clipped on. Um, this is all in position down here. Your adjust has been loosened up, so that should work fine. And the last two springs are these top ones to hold the top part in. So they just kind of slip in like that. And then this is kind of where the bitch comes in. You gotta pull them over this nub here. And this sometimes goes okay. Sometimes it can be a little tricky. Now, if I had the right tools, as I said earlier, it would go okay, but without the right tools, it can be a bitch. And sometimes you get lucky and it goes right on. Did you see the spark? Yeah, I did. <laughs> I was like, where'd it go? <laughs> But be careful if you're doing it this way because these things have a lot of tension on them. Now, I got lucky on that first one. Let's see if I get lucky again. 
there we go. So those are all back in position. Everything's good and tight. And now I just put the drum back on. And hopefully it all works. So I got the drum here. As you saw, the old one was shot, so you know what? We're gonna go ahead and put this one on. There you go. Trace, you wanna do me a favor and go push the brake? Don't ever push the brake unless this drum is on, because if you push it too far and those uh, pistons come out of the wheel cylinder, then you gotta buy a new wheel cylinder. All right, let up. Okay, so go ahead and push the brake. There we go. Let up. All right, so they're pretty close, which is good. Otherwise, you may have to adjust your adjuster out so they're just clearing the drum, but in this case, they look like they're in pretty good shape. We're gonna go ahead and throw the wheel back on here, and uh, we're done. So that's really all uh, all you need to do. I'm not gonna show you putting the wheel back on. That's pretty simple. Uh, make sure you pay attention to where the parts come off and put them back on in the correct order and the correct position. Uh, these are your brakes. So if you're something you have not tackled, uh, it might be a good idea to have somebody that knows what they're doing. You don't wanna mess your brakes up. It could uh, cost you big time. Well, thanks for taking the time to swing by my channel. I hope you found that video educational. Uh, if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. That's greatly appreciated. And also comment if you have a question. And of course, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. And I have a lot of other uh, videos out there on the channel um, that you may have an interest in. In fact, there'll be two right up here you can take a look at. And if you want to get to know me a little bit more, you can always swing over to my other channel, All About Teardrops. On that channel, I talk uh, in the early stages, I'm talking about choosing the right camper for going full-time RV and then the path that you need to take or the path that we need to take to get from where we are today to where we want to be, which will be eventually full-time RVers. So anyways, I'd swing over that channel. I'll put the link down in the description. And as always, have a great day.